Hey, Steve here, and welcome back to another episode of my Processing Subscriber Images video series. In this video, we're going to look at an image sent in to me by Sean Denholm, or Denham, who, uh, yeah, he said this about the image. Uh, the mist on the lake and floating huts made for the perfect photo, but I can't quite seem to get the calm, misty, quiet feeling that I felt on the day. So what I'm going to do in just a few seconds in this video is show you my steps for hopefully achieving that in Photoshop. So as always, if, uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then you can hit the subscribe button in the bottom corner of this video to be reminded every time I publish a new video. And if you do like this video, then please just remember to give it a quick thumbs up on YouTube to let me know. Now with that said, let's move over to Photoshop and get started. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop with Sean's image, which I've opened directly into Photoshop from Lightroom, having made um, actually no changes or edits in Lightroom. So this is pretty much the raw file as is. And uh, yeah, so I think this walkthrough is gonna be uh, reasonably quick because this image is already uh, you know, a long way towards uh, being a great shot. So, I mean, obviously the image has been captured wonderfully. It's a beautiful image of a beautiful scene, uh, lots of detail and color in the raw file already. So what we're just gonna do in this uh, first few stages is to bring out that color and contrast uh, via a, um, a number of contrast adjustments. So I'm just gonna jump straight in. And because we're in the high 20s uh, with episodes here, I'm just gonna run pretty quickly through. So I'm sure that you know most of you watching this are pretty up to speed with uh, the kinds of things that I'm doing here. So if not, then you know go back and watch some of my other videos and I'll put some links in the description below. Um, but otherwise, I'll just kind of power through quite quickly. So uh, yeah, the first thing I'll do is just uh, add some contrast to the midtones in this image. I'm going to use the luminosity masking panel for that. Uh, and we actually just have a button that's going to do that in one click for us. So um, let's hit that. Uh, so under the contrast section, if we hit this M button under the curves uh, column, then that's going to add a curves adjustment that's going to add contrast and then automatically apply a luminosity mask, isolating the midtones to that adjustment. So I'm going to hit the M button. And there we go, it's done it. So I'll double click that and now we can see the curve and we can see the, uh, the mask that has been applied. If I just alt click on the, uh, on the mask there, so midtone contrast adjustment so that when I toggle it off and on, you can see even just with that one adjustment, a lot of those really nice pinky blue colors are starting to come through. So uh, yeah, that's really good. I, um, yeah, I like that. So let's now, well, I think what we'll do now is just uh, do a similar thing, but with uh, a darkening, um, yeah, a darkening curve. So let's darken the highlights with that there. Now let's see. Okay, that's not actually made a very strong effect. So I'm just gonna double click the uh, curves adjustment and drag this curve down just to just to darken it. So what I'm, what I'm gonna do is try to kind of balance out the brightness of the sky with the brightness of the foreground. So the sky is quite bright, but I wanna make the, uh, the foreground kind of the, yeah, help lead us into the scene. And to do that, it needs to be getting a bit more attention than it is um, just with the, the leading lines. You know, we need a bit of light down there as well. So there we go, darken the highlights a little bit. Uh, so now let's uh, let's try lightening the foreground and I'll do it this time without the use of a luminosity mask. I'll just add a curves adjustment and I will just push it up, push the curve up. And I'm just gonna get that out of the way. I'll grab a brush this time, just a black brush on, well, I'll, I'll start on 100% opacity and just brush it out of the sky and then see if I need to blend it a little bit more afterwards. Um, but I think the nature of this being quite a misty shot, I don't think it's gonna matter if we sort of blur the lines a little bit. Okay, so there we go. That's the, uh, the brightening effect on the foreground. So let's now do the opposite thing and try and darken the sky just a little bit. So same thing, curves adjustment, let's drag the curve 
down just to darken a little bit and again we can see some of those colors starting to come through a bit more. Uh, this time I'll invert the mask, Command or Control I on the keyboard. Now with a white brush I'm just going to reveal this darkening effect in the sky. I won't go as low as the buildings this time. Okay, so there we go. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, effect of these four adjustments now and we can see how far this has already come. So here is the raw file and now here is with our four contrast adjustments and it's really starting to pop already. The next thing I want to do is if we just look through this patch of sky here just where I'm running the mouse to my eye there looks to be a little bit of a kind of a green uh, tint that is you know it's mixing with that blue of the sky and it's just creating a slight sort of muddiness to the sky there so I want to get rid of that I'm just going to do that with a curves adjustment I'm going to choose the green channel and then I'm just going to click and drag this curve down ever so slightly now as I do this you can see the effect it's having on the image as a whole it's adding you know by removing green we're increasing the magenta cast in the image um, that's okay because I'm going to mask this effect into just that patch of the sky in just a moment so here's the before and after so let's now invert the mask and now take that white brush and I'll just reduce the opacity to about 50% and just brush that through the middle of the sky there just to clean up that kind of muddiness a slight slight muddiness in the sky and the before and after on that is as you can see so that's pretty good maybe uh, let's see actually the reflection let's see if we can put a bit of that magenta into the reflection as well just to make sure it all lines up yeah that's better and just through the middle here Okay, that's good. Now, I did actually like the effect of that magenta cast across the image. So I would normally do uh, any color adjustments at the beginning of the workflow, but it's okay to, uh, you know, to do some processing like, like I'm doing now with the contrast. And then if, if something strikes you as looking good, then there's no reason why you can't just do this at any time. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna add a curves adjustment now and replicate that green effect in the sky or that we used for the sky and just sort of let it apply to the whole image probably won't want to make it as strong as I did for the sky so even just there that's only you know it's barely imperceptible uh, in the video but basically we've moved that point on the curve from 127 to 124 so that's just enough to just give it a real slight magenta tint so um, yeah I like that now to be honest the contrast adjustments that we've made and these color adjustments I don't want to do too much more than this um, because you know if it, it's going to lose that um, that kind of misty feel to it so I don't want to add too much color and contrast I think this is a good amount that we've got at the moment just going from the before to the after. So what I might do now is just add a, um, a contrast or what I call a, a contrast vignette. So I'll show you what that is. I'll add a curves adjustment and I'll darken the image a little bit, just dragging the curve down. But then I'll also grab this, uh, the black point and just move it up a little bit so that, you know, we're lifting the black point so that it, not only when I, um, yeah, when I apply this to the edges of the image, not only is it darkening the image, but it's doing it in a way that reduces the contrast because we're flattening out that bottom half of the curve in that shadow area and then lifting the, the black point so that the black isn't black. It's, it's uh, you know, a few points above that on the histogram and it just creates a bit more of a hazy, lighter black. So with that done, uh, what I'm going to do, I mean, we could use a brush just to mask this out of the middle, but um, here's something that I like to do also, uh, just using the lasso tool. I'm just going to draw where I want the, uh, the vignette to be. So let's kind of draw like a kind of a triangle shape here. Actually, that. let me do that again. 
just want to make sure I capture the uh, all of the uh, this this jetty here. Whoops, don't have to be a million percent accurate. So okay, there we go. Uh, now with that selection active and clicking on the layer mask, I'm going to invert. So Command or Control and I. And now we can see we've masked that center, that yeah, that central part of the image. We've masked that out of this effect, leaving the edges dark and lower contrast. Now, if I deselect this selection, you'll see obviously that is uh, that doesn't look very good as it is. So what we need to do is just feather the layer mask to a point where that line disappears. Actually, I mean I double clicked on the layer mask, but we don't need to do that. I'm just going to double click on the curves adjustment and then click on the layer mask and this info panel um, brings up the feather slider so let's slide this so as, as i slide the feather up you'll see the edge begins to fade and here it's faded quite a lot but it's still quite an obvious edge especially if you look up in the little uh, navigator window up here you can see it i basically want to push it all the way until it virtually disappears so somewhere around here and you know if i disable and re-enable the layer we can see the uh, the leftover effect on the edges of the image there so actually i might want to just feather that a little bit more um, because i can still see those lines quite strongly in the small preview in the top right there okay I think that's a lot better. So yeah, I'm all the way up into like a 421 pixel feather. So there we go. Um, that is the uh, the final um, kind of contrast and light kind of adjustment that I would really think about making here. Now there's a couple of extra optional uh, adjustments that you might want to make. So for this Im image in particular, if we look at the histogram, we can see there's this massive gap up here on the right hand side of the histogram, which tells us that there aren't actually really any highlights in the image. Now, if you want to keep the image looking sort of dark and, um, you know, that pre dawn kind of glow, uh, then, you know, there's nothing wrong with leaving it darker and not having those highlights. But um, if you wanted to make an image that's just going to pop a little bit more and have a bit more bite in the contrast, then what we can do is add another curves adjustment and then just take this uh, the white point control point here and just slide it towards the left. And you've got the freedom to do that all the way up to the point where the histogram starts, uh, you know, where you can see the data in the histogram. And as long as you don't go any further, then you're guaranteed that you're not actually um, overexposing or clipping any highlights. So, you know, feel free to leave this at any point here that you like. Uh, but for the purpose of the demo, I'll, I'll bring it all the way up to that point there. So here's before and here's the after. And actually, from this point on, there's two more things that I'm going to show you. Um, I forgot the uh, the next thing I wanted to, to do, which was just do a bit of dodging and burning on these uh, jetties here, just to help draw the eye. Now I won't spend the time to do this like a hundred and you know a hundred percent accurately. Um, I would recommend that you do when you have the time to to process your own images. So um, yeah, I'll just show you the idea. Uh, what I'm going to do is just create a, um, a merged copied layer and I've got a button there that does that for me in the panel. So we've got this layer that we can dodge and burn onto. Um, if you want to do that the long way, you can just use the menu, go select all, edit, copy merged, and then edit paste. And then with the dodge and burn tools, so let's take the dodge tool and just very roughly, I'm just going to sort of lighten the jetty here just to help lead us into the image. This is probably a bit overdone already. I've got the exposure very, you know, set very strong. 
so it's having a bit of an effect on the color at the moment because I'm sort of doing it a bit too harshly but even just with that then we can see here you know this is the kind of effect that you want to go for uh, when doing this kind of edit, edit so just helping enhance those lines um, but now moving on finally to the last uh, the last adjustment that I'm going to show you here and this calls back to uh, Sean's initial query uh, regarding the mistiness of the shot so you know as I mentioned in the intro Sean um, you know was struggling to to get across the the sort of the beautiful misty look and feel of this morning when he took the image so you know even though it you know I think it looks great as is I'll just show you a technique that you can use to enhance that misty effect and feel and again we're going to use a curves adjustment to do that and it's quite simple really we're just going to grab this black point and move it up say to around 50 but you know after after we brush this in you can adjust it to uh, to make it um, to the level that you want uh, and now i'm going to invert the mask command or control i and now with a white brush on let's go 30 percent opacity i'm just going to sort of brush not like solidly i'm not just going to sweep across the whole image i'm just going to sort of dab the brush around to add in a bit of that misty look and feel just in the middle distance there. So I'll probably exaggerate the effect just for the purpose of the demo. And let's have a look at the before and after on that. So here's the before, here's the after. So it's just sort of misting the, you know, adding that misty effect. Uh, in case you wanted to enhance that after the fact and you know once you once you've brushed it in then again you can just come here to increase the strength if you wanted to now it's only going to work going so far up here otherwise you lose all the color and it just looks weird um, but you know anywhere in this kind of lower quadrant is a safe amount to uh, to move this black point point. and there we go that pretty much wraps this walkthrough up so the only thing that i would do now if i was going to save this and then you know load it online just using my panel um luminosity masking panel hit the output for web button hit the 2048 pixel button and that's going to automatically duplicate the image resize it to 2048 pixels on the wide on the long edge and then it's going to run my sharpening um, process so I've got a bit of blur and then a bit of smart sharpen and that is how I create my images for um, well that's how I create the the web sized images for Facebook and for my website and whatnot the reason 2048 pixels instead of 2000 is because anything other than 2048 when you upload to Facebook then Facebook's going to crunch the image and um, you know compress it in some way and it's going to look all pixelated and weird 2048 is there it is Facebook's high quality image size requirement so even if it's larger then it's still going to crunch and do something weird so 2048 on the long edge is what you want to do when loading images to Facebook uh, and so that's what I've got in the panel there so with that done I think that probably wraps this video up thanks to Sean again for sending this beautiful image in and thanks to everyone else for watching and sticking with me through to the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it